Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about computing the thermal or vibrational entropy of simple solids. And I'm not going to derive this, uh, but I'm just going to talk about applying it. Uh, we are going to be using the entropy expression from the Einstein approximation. So this is treating every atom as a isolated simple harmonic oscillator. Is a uh, S that's isolated. And they all have the same frequency. Well, let me following my notes here. I'm Einstein frequency. So here we've got the energy of the Einstein oscillator as the Dirac, uh, reduced Dirac constant times the frequency. <clears throat> okay, so that makes sense. Well, it, it will. Uh, so you know, you can you can read more about this and where I I took this expression from. From the fundamentals of ceramics by M W bar. Zoom. <laughs> this is where I, I found the discussion of the uh, vibrational entropy. And uh, that Einstein approximation, this is the heat capacity due to the Einstein, Einstein approximation. And uh, somewhere on my YouTube channel, I, I've derived this as well. I, I can't find it. Maybe I'll, I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. Uh, but this gives us the uh, molar heat capacity. And the reason you need that is because you don't know the Einstein frequency. So what I did in this simple example was to uh, say that I had some you know semi-metal or, or uh, insulator and what did I pick sulfur I think and I looked at the heat capacity from the heat capacity I found the Einstein frequency and uh, from the Einstein frequency I computed the entropy due to thermal vibrations. So when I was first working on this problem, I, I kept getting stuck, and it's because I was looking at a metal. So uh, you can't look at metals because metals have heat capacities in part due to the electronic contribution and in part due to the vibrational. Uh, and you just can't do that. Now, you could if you're able to isolate the electronic uh, contribution to the heat capacity and then only have the vibrational. Uh, we, don't, we don't measure that, of course. Uh, but for those of you that are, are interested uh, in most solid state textbooks, you can find a, a derivation for the electronic heat capacity. And 
within a, a rough approximation, they're going to be proportional to the density of states at the Fermi energy, Kb squared T. So uh, I, I consider that kind of beyond the scope of, of what I wanted to show in this example, but certainly uh, it's something you could could experiment with. So for here, I just took the heat capacity, uh, experimental heat capacity for sulfur. And sulfur, you know, it's, it's a semi-metal or non-metal. Uh, and that allows us to find the Einstein frequency, which is around 40 terahertz which is is not unreasonable a little bit a little bit high possibly <laughs> and then plug that in to the thermal uh, heat capacity expression and that gives us uh 23.5 or 24 joule per kelvin which is is uh, certainly a, a reasonable value for uh, reasonable value uh, and plotting it as a function of temperature you have a you know approximately linear and uh, if you go to NIST you have a uh, entropy of solid sulfur that's around uh, 32. So that's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit higher. But considering all the approximations that went into this, it shows that this expression, and I think I used this one here, is, is actually a, a fairly, a fairly good approximation.